Hello and welcome to our interview with the founders of Dota Valkyries. As part of our Women in Esports initiative, we want to celebrate and spotlight some of the amazing diversity and inclusivity organisations within the esports scene. Dota Valkyries has a simple yet massive goal to get more women players to the top level of Dota 2. Today, we're speaking to Emma and Ruby, the founders of Dota Valkyries. My name is Emma, uh, online I go by Catfish, uh, and I'm one of the founders of Dota Valkyries. Uh, previously, I've worked in the Overwatch community, having created, uh, helped found the Cat Collective, uh, and also I work really closely with women in games. My name is Ruby, I do community management work in the Dota scene, I work with some people you might know, like Serex and Slacks, Topson, or Jerex, or Sing Sing. And I recently started tw- streaming on Twitch too. Can you tell us what kickstarted the development and idea behind creating Dota Valkyries? Well, it really just started with a conversation, it, just a 5 a.m. conversation with a friend, my friend Sheepstick. And we were trying to count how many women in the high MMR pools that we actually knew. And we, it came to, I think the answer was four. <laughs> across the entire world and and obviously that seemed really alien to us and we started talking how can we first of all how can we find these people that you know seem seemingly aren't aren't don't exist um and then we started talking about how can we get these people that are that probably exist but we don't know about them into everyone knows about them because they're pros on the ti main stage and we were just really just talking about like ideals like if we had full control if we you know, if Valve listened to every word that we said, what could we do? And then it slowly became more realistic. (laughs) Yeah, and then, you know, a couple of days later, I was kind of like, well, why why not try and do some of the things that we said that we, you know, we would like to do to make this happen? And that's really where it started. So what are the main goals of Dota Valkyries? Basically, we want to globally look and uh, support as many eligible players as we can. So as many women um, across the globe as we can who want to be involved in our initiative. Um, We want to work with tournament organisers to help uh, women's leagues, women's tournaments, mixed gender tournaments, uh, be open and safe to all of the players who want to be involved. Um, But also, of course, we want to provide coaching to those who are who do want to reach that next rung, who do want to, you know, push for 8K, 9K, 10K and push to for those spots in tier two teams. So then as well, what's really important is to be able to navigate that tier two scene um, and, you know, below as well uh, and create those networks and create that communication just so we have that uh, open sort of working relationship. Um, And of course, our main goal as uh, we, you know, we've said a few times is to get a woman onto the TI main stage uh, as a player in a, in a top tier team. You mentioned that it's really important to reach players at all levels. How important is it for you to work with the players at the grassroots level? Yeah, I would say this is really important, especially with the work that we're doing right now, just trying to create a path to becoming a pro where there hasn't really been a mapped out path for women before. Um, it's all very vague. It was a sort of idea of be good enough and they won't be able to stop you. But how do you be good enough? You know, and it's, it's always it's always about more than skill. It's always about the contacts and, that you have and the, you know, the people that like you and the people that you've met before and the, like the network you have and your marketing and how well everyone knows you and how well people will be excited when you're announced on the team. It's all of this. So, yeah, it's a huge it's a huge thing for us to be able to say, this person started here and we want to help them take every single step to get to where they want to be. It sounds like you have a clear plan on where to start. What about the end goal? Where do you see Dota Valkyries heading in the next few years? That's a hard question to answer when we're so close to inception. Um, of course, you know, I want to say within five years we'll have a woman on the TI main stage. Uh, but, you know, if we don't, that doesn't mean that we can't help so many women along the way. Um, our, you know, goals and step-by-step plan that we've been working through, um, not only ourselves, but with some really great people in space who, who really want to help this initiative, uh, mean that, you know, we're going to be able to reach, you know, either streamers, content creators and other in the space, uh, not just players as well, because it is everyone who, you know, we can band together and, and make things change. Before we dive into the community, for those people who don't know the game, please explain Dota in your own words. It is complicated chess, um, where nothing is, no game has ever really been recorded or talked about before enough that anyone can learn it, you know, 
learn it from scratch. Um, so you have to learn by failing miserably over and over and over and over and over <laughs> until you fail less. Time, my all time favorite game to watch, definitely. So even if you're only going to learn a little bit of Dota, learn enough to be able to follow it and follow the pros and follow the teams and the drama and the, the <laughs> games and, the, you know, the comebacks and the castles and everything. Like, it's just, oh, it's like, it's like EastEnders for nerds. There will always be a hero in Dota that will match a mechanic that you like in a video game. And from there, I mean, you can also pick characters based on how they look. Like just getting attached to a character is the quickest way to spend 10,000 hours in Dota before you've even realized it. Um, also, watch the OG Red Bull documentary. If you weren't interested in, in Dota or in esports or in if you just wanted to watch an, an amazing documentary, that's the one to watch. Find some friends. Like it's 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 hard. It's a hard game to learn one alone. I wouldn't have got into it myself uh, if my friend wasn't so kind to teach me uh, after playing Overwatch quite a few times. They were like, oh, you should try this other game. It's called Dota. You can play Crystal Maiden. Just pretend she's May. And, that, <laughs> and that's how I started. <laughs> how much of your time will you be focusing on creating the community at the grassroots to professional level? Or are you going to be focusing on helping already established players? Well, we've kind of split the organization in two a little. Um, and we have one side that looks at community and at grassroots and sort of, you know, looks at what we can do from that side of angle. Uh, but we also have a side that looks at esports and, you know, the women who are already trying to reach those top levels um, because the support that they need is is very different. And, you know, the skills that we is different for each person. So, you know, I'm tending to lean towards the community side, whereas Ruby sort of taking charge of the esports side of things. Um, so yeah, so we're having different um, ideas on each side, but of course, you know, we have a lot of crossover and help each other uh, on each side as well. Dota 2 has quite a committed, long-standing community, which can be unforgiving, sometimes toxic, or hard to get into at times. What are some of the ways in which Dota Valkyries aims to tackle the Dota community? Yeah, Dota has always been a very insular space, actually. Um, it's, it's hard to really fully understand the unique nature of, our, of the problems that we have in our scene uh, it's very often very different to the other scenes that uh, the other esports scenes toxicity it's not something you can just uproot in one day it's um and standards of the data community like what toxicity is have slowly decreased over the years to even the point where like a pro player being sexist or a pro player being racist is like something that's defensible you know it, it is something that you can go online and say yeah, but <laughs> after a pro player has done something like this or any figure in the scene. So our goal isn't necessarily to reshape the entire global community of Dota. I think that's um, a bit much, <laughs> although I admire the ambition of anyone that would take on that project. Um, in the short term, the goal is really just we want to provide support and sooner community to all of the girls and the women that play our game that may face that extra bit of toxicity that is well catalogued at this point. Um. Ruby, you're a community advocate within the Dota scene. How is Dota Valkyries planning on supporting content creators, streamers, and artists and such? We definitely want to be supporting content creators and streamers. That's a huge part. They're, they're really important figures in developing the health of our community um, in Dota, and we definitely want to be helping them as much as we can. Um, but I don't know that developing or investing in the larger community, um, including artists right now, uh, is, is a priority for us, at least in the short term. When thinking about the community at large, personally, I feel like the, the health of a game, of any competitive game or single player game or anything, is directly tied to the health of its creative fan base and how much they create on your behalf, how much the work they do because you've created something they love to then create something you love. Um, and I feel like Dota's really suffered in that aspect for a, for a few years now. Growing the community will naturally help to make the scene more inclusive as the project goes on. What is your opinion on the current UK esports community, especially in Dota 2? I would say UK Dota has been somewhat mocked uh, for many years, the same way that UK CSGO has. Um, but I would say that at this point right now, we're the closest we've been to like 
UK Dota being really respected and we have like legitimate competitors in the public space, you know, like Tana, Atlantic, Symmetrical, these are all big names that um, we've been able, like you talk to anybody and they'll know these people. Um, and we're, reach we're really reaching that point. And then that is the point where other UK players can say, hey, look, I can be recognized too. Like I would say that UK Dota is really at its best point that it's been so far. And that's not a sign that it's slowing down. It's a sign that it's, it's speeding up. The whole talent scene has been um, sort of influenced by British people for a very long time. But before Tika, there were very few advocates for British players, I would say. But at least that I know of, personally. And he's done an amazing job sort of hyping up these players and, and getting them more well-known within the scene, um, to, you know, as a side thing of his own career, of being an analyst and everything. Leading on from the UK region, what are your ambitions when it comes to other regions? Are you planning to focus only on Europe or are you looking to expand more worldwide? Well, we do want to help, uh, you know, women worldwide uh, as much as possible. Uh, so we are sort of trying to widen our network and widen our contacts to be able to uh, reach out to maybe ambassadors in those regions where we're less familiar um, and ask for their help, uh, you know, as you know, it is a little bit less familiar for us over there, uh, you know, but doesn't mean that we want to help any less. What was the feedback you've received in regards to Dota Valkyries so far? Uh, well, it's it's been really positive so far. Uh, you know, almost overwhelmingly positive to the point where you know i'd expect you know a little bit more more hate mail a little bit more people telling me that this is a bad idea but you know the the reception that we get is that it seems to be that people are waiting to see what we do and sort of withholding their judgment and maybe not being too harsh on us just yet of course we did get a lot of team siren comments and uh you know we're uh, probably never going to quite manage to live all of those down um but uh, you know we try our best to explain we're making all female teams and you know pushing that agenda necessarily uh we're looking for you know ideally uh you know esports to end up as a 50 50 split if we can um but yeah i mean i guess most of the most of the feedback has been really positive but yeah it just feels like people are waiting to see what we'll do next and have anticipation about what we'll do ruby what are the barriers you think dota valkyries is going to face in the future i mean there are so many um the, the, you know, probably one of the most basic and might need to go unsaid is just funding, funding for what we want to do um, and to be able to hire coaches for players and other kinds of, to be able to host seminars with professionals that could help them. Um, and then there's toxicity in the community, which we've already covered. Um, people that would try and work to prevent the work that we're doing or try to undermine what we do uh that kind of those kinds of problems that mm -hmm. we haven't actually had so many of that i've noticed um the voice for us has always been louder than the voice against us which is really nice to see and there's also just the current skill gap between men and women in the scene um and this uh even when we eliminate the skill gap issue there will be like problems of changing the players' behaviours when they're at land tournaments where they can just do what they want because it's just them and the boys. It's this very casual atmosphere that I think a lot of them really like where there is no pressure for them to act a certain way that, you know, or whatever because it's just them and the guys and they can just do whatever they want. And then there is encouraging orgs to invest uh, in a woman. I mean, any... Any woman that joins a pro team in Dota is going to make them a lot of money, so it is in their in their best interest. I think it'll be the most marketable player Dota's ever seen. <laughs> it feels like investing in a woman right now, there is no, no guarantee that they will make it up the next 20 steps that they need to make before um, any kind of TO invest or not TO org investment would pay off. One thing I would add to that, if that's okay, um, is also the willingness to share information and the fact that there is competition in between the orcs. Yeah. Um, and that means that then it's harder for us to get the information that we want, because obviously, at the end of the day, we want a checklist to go to, uh, uh, to, go to you know, the highest female players with and be like, you know, this is what you need to hit in order to get into these organizations. This is what you need to achieve, you know, 8K MMR, be in this region, you know, speak these languages, have, you know, this many followers on Twitter, whatever it is. But 
you know, especially when there's competition involved, people are less likely to give information out. Emma, you're really well known in the Overwatch community. How would you compare the Overwatch scene in terms of inclusion projects like Dota Valkyries and the inclusivity of the community itself? So I find that the Overwatch uh, community and, you know, the esports scene itself is is very different to Dota and also really interesting as well, because there is, you know, like a sort of concrete path to the overwatch to the higher rungs of overwatch with contenders uh, yes. it's a tier two scene that a lot of people have dedicated time to to building up you know there's a lot of uh, uh teams below that as well um and you know a, a dozen or so communities that are focused on women um, on lgbtqia players uh you know on those minorities to make sure that they do also have their space um so to you know then look at dota and where it I could see that maybe this was lacking, this, you know, route to pro, you know, and these other sort of uh, elements to it. So, of course, I wanted to take the experience that I got from Overwatch uh, in creating a community there and put it uh, in to see if I can make a difference in the Dota world too. You mentioned your primary goal is a professional player and the path to progression. We do see a lot of female-only tournaments within the esports industry, especially recently. What is the opinion of Dota Valkyries on these competitions? Do they help or do they only hinder this path to progression? Well, personally, having uh, held several female only tournaments, of course, I would always argue in favour of them. Uh, however, that has been in, you know, the Overwatch uh, community. So, you know, uh, Dota community, I haven't played in all female tournaments myself. However, I think they are a necessary thing to give, not only to give women confidence to play in that, uh, kind of way but also to give you experience of it you're not going to know if you want to go pro in a game unless you get to play in a tournament and you're not going to play in a mm -hmm. tournament as a woman unless you have all women tournaments that's the only place they have right now uh, although it's maybe not something that we're looking to do um, we're hoping to be that sort of middle ground where we have mixed gender tournament ideally but you know that's sort of looking to the future at the moment because uh, there are already some great uh, all-female tournaments that are held uh, by other great communities and uh, you know we can maybe be that next step towards uh, having mixed gender teams in tier 2, tier 1, TI etc. As you just mentioned providing opportunities and building confidence is an important step. How are you planning to find future talent to support? Is there going to be an application process where talented players come to yourselves? Or are you planning to implement a scouting system? Well, discovering talent is still something that we're working on developing. Um, we're hoping to eventually be big enough that women can approach us. But a lot of women at the higher tiers, they play with aliases. They have for years, you know, where they don't reveal their gender. They don't reveal who they are. They just play. Um, and that's the case for a lot of people. They just want to play, you know, don't really care about what gender they are. They just want to play Dota, which is totally fine and totally good. We need to find women that would be interested in competing and interested in getting to that next level because we want to push them all the way, not just some of the way until they're happy and then, um, you know, hop off at 9k and, <laughs> and you know, we've spent a lot of money in coaching or whatever and that's the end of that. Um, basically, we're going to have forms wherever we can. We're going to make it very public, our process. Um, on our website that's coming out on Twitter. We want to make sure that anyone that even thinks about, hey, I'm a, you know, I'm 8K MMR and I've never really told anybody about it. Like, I'm, I'm, you know, I'm not a very public woman. I'm not in the Dota community just yet. I'm, you know, whatever. I want, as soon as they think about it, I want to be able to say, hey, look, go here. <laughs> this is all you need to do. Just fill out this form, we'll handle the rest. That's that's ideally what I'd like to be able to say. Um, but we do need to find them first and, and find them across the world as well. So what can we expect to see from the Dota Valkyries over the next couple of months? Uh, well, just to lay down like a small timeline, I guess. Uh, next thing to look out for is our community Discord. Um, you'll be able to find that on our Twitter, so keep your eyes there. Um, and then we'll also be looking at releasing a website, uh, which will have a form on it as well, so that you can get in contact with us a little bit more easier if you do want to get involved and uh, either help us out or you want to, you know, reach that next uh, level as a pro yourself. Um, further than that, we are going to be looking um, either at uh, helping other tournaments or, you know, maybe even potentially looking at uh, running our own. Um, and further than that, you know, it's 
bit of uh, we, we haven't got anything planned for towards the end of the year so far uh, but if you keep an eye on our twitter then you'll get the latest scoop sounds like you have some clear plans for the future with dota valkyries pushing for further inclusivity how do you think the wider media sports industry can create a safer space for women in general it's definitely it's a very tough question um it has to be everywhere right you know if you if you challenge toxicity hunt and this, these kind of problems in esports you can't just challenge it in one space you can't just have the tos be good at it and the orgs don't have to be and you know the community on reddit doesn't have to be um it has to be everywhere everyone has to call each other out for their not necessarily call each other out but hold each other accountable for their mistakes and and their mm, misguided views on on other people on, on and if they're being toxic of course hmm. it requires a conscious effort to make progress um especially when the progress requires empathy which i think is the biggest thing that we need to combat uh, toxicity or, or problems in the in the industry um but i think it, we're making progress i think it is visible you know i've spoken to a lot of people that have been in the industry for years and years and years and and it's like now compared to how it used to be um it's, it's night and day difference already so i think as long as we just keep pushing for a more advanced and inclusive industry and we hold the bad actors accountable where we can then as well as using what power that we have to make to make that difference, um, no matter how little, then then we'll get there. On that hopeful note, we have now come to the end of our interview with the founders of Dota Valkyries. If you want to know more about the initiative and to get the latest information, make sure to follow them on twitter.com forward slash Dota Valkyries. At Women in Esports, it's great to see more initiatives and projects being created to support women across a variety of titles throughout the gaming and esports industry as a whole. We wish Dota Valkyries the best of luck and can't wait to see what they work on in the future.